Being able to stay focused for a long amount of time is one of the most incredible skills that you can acquire. When we are focused, we think clearly, we absorb more knowledge, and we perform at the peak of our skills. But as soon as fatigue kicks in, our performance declines, our ability to learn disappears, and our mind becomes foggy. Now consider what it takes to become a professional esports player. At its core, it requires thousands of hours of effective practice, and racking up these hours of quality practice means long gaming sessions with constant focus the entire time. So those who can focus for longer than others will inevitably gain those thousands of hours much easier, and they will inevitably reach the top ranks a lot faster. So how can we enhance our energy and focus so that we can train longer and improve faster? Well, the go-to method is just to use certain substances, like caffeine and nootropics. These have a lot of fascinating biological interactions that can give esports players a significant boost in their focus. But in recent years, as our understanding of the human brain and our technology have each improved, we've accessed a completely new avenue for altering our minds. And in this video, I want to open up this avenue to you and show you one of many new technologies that hold the potential for altering the human brain in a way that can enhance your practice, performance, and maybe even your esports career. Playing at our best, maintaining our performance, and enhancing our training quality all require a perfect balance of energy and focus. And to influence this energy and this focus, we have to alter our brain's activity. Now, there is constant electrical activity that underlies every mental state and cognitive process. We usually refer to this as brain oscillations or brain waves. In the last video, I discussed what these brainwaves really are and how certain music can enhance them, leading to improved reaction time, focus, and even learning ability. But while music can influence our brain's electrical rhythm, it is limited in its effect, and there are likely far more powerful methods that we can use to get greater results. In fact, I recently got the opportunity to chat with a Slovenian professor and researcher named Igor Yerman who shed some light on how we might be able to use magnets to boost our brains. Now, Igor studies bioelectromagnetic fields and works with a company called Omnipemp to create technology that can directly influence our brainwaves via magnetic fields. Uh, these magnetic fields can enhance, if they are repetitive, you know, they can work in a resonance uh, manner and uh, they can um, put certain processes uh, in our head or in our organism in resonance, you know, with them. And they can then very uh, slowly and gently induce certain vibrations in our bodies. Now, before my conversation with Igor, I had heard about a similar technology used in a clinical setting. This is called transcranial magnetic stimulation. For short, we can refer to it as TMS. And it uses huge, powerful coils to stimulate specific brain areas and forces it to adopt a new way of functioning. Now, TMS can have some profound benefits on cognitive functioning and even mood. But the problem is that this technology requires some heavy-duty machinery and can even have some potential side effects in the hands of someone who isn't trained. So Igor and his team are looking into using low-powered pulsed electromagnetic frequencies, or PEMF, instead. Uh, with TMS, normally, the fields would be very high. I mean, these magnetic fields are of so high intensity, approaching, for instance, one Tesla. It can uh, not only influence, but it can provoke the firing of our neurons, you know? Yeah. And uh, this is an invasive method, while with PAMF, it is non-invasive. So 
the organism can adapt to it and also refuse such um, influence it is just, if it is better for it. Now, what Igor mentioned here is a measurement of the magnetic field called Tesla. To understand how powerful PEMF devices are, let's take a look at this scale. Now, around 1 to 3 Tesla is where medical grade TMS machines would function. At 2.5 millitesla is where PEMF device is, making it around a thousand times weaker. So this made me question if it is really powerful enough to even influence our brainwaves. And why wouldn't we just make it a little more powerful? TMS is, is magnitudes higher than that. But if you were to say have like a, it's like 25 millitesla or like 100 millitesla, uh, do you think that at that point there is uh, a certain level of danger there that you're starting to that you're starting to push into dangerous territory? Mm, if you go to higher intensities, like let's say 300 tes uh, no tesla, millitesla, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. tesla, it's mortal, but let's say 300 millitesla. Um, there was time some 30 to 40 years ago when I put uh, my head into such coil and really in the, the moment, you know, I felt really very badly. You know, it was really aggressive, something unbearable almost. As Igor later explains in the conversation, they had found research showing that far weaker magnetic fields can still influence us. In fact, the Earth's magnetic field has a strength of 30 to 60 micro Tesla, which is around 50 to 100 times weaker than the PEMF device. And research has shown that even this has an effect on us. So Igor explained that the power isn't as important as repetition and frequency. A single pulse of the electromagnetic field likely will have no impact on us. But when it occurs repeatedly at specific frequencies, the brain and body will start to synchronize. So my next question for Igor was how impactful this PEMF device is on our cognitive state. Exactly how much of a boost can it really give us? And the initial research that they've done demonstrates how it can boost both relaxation and focus, depending on the frequency or protocol. And when using the device for focus, they noticed that participants made fewer errors during the sustained attention test. But more interesting is the direct influence it had on their brainwaves. Using the PEMF device, they increased alpha waves and decreased delta waves compared to the placebo. So while the control group was growing increasingly tired and unfocused, the PEMF groups were likely sustaining their focus over the 30 minute test. And the strange part of this research is that they aim to boost beta waves, which in theory should have a stimulating effect. But the device actually led to having a more relaxing effect than anticipated. We found a significant lowering of error making in a special test performed during the whole stimulation. Uh, but also we found that uh, the these volunteers, um, they were more relaxed, this is interesting, you know, with attention and uh, we interpret this that they actually used less energy when they were under this stimulation, you know, and because of that they could be more relaxed. So judging from the research and conversation with Igor, I was pretty confident that this technology has some potential. I expected it to help someone fight off fatigue and sustain attention over more extended periods of time. But I wanted to put it to the test myself to see if I could actually notice its influence, especially during a long gaming session. So I set up an informal self experiment, which included two controlled gaming sessions on two separate days. And for a few lucky individuals, I streamed for them the entire experiment. Now, on each day, I had the same schedule. Everything was pre-planned from the moment I woke up to what game I would play at each part of the day. I even controlled factors like what I ate, when I ate, and how much caffeine I consumed. And on each day, I used cognitive tests, questionnaires, and brain scans to evaluate my level of mental energy, focus, and performance. 
Now on day one, I played the entire day without the headset. But on day two, I used it throughout most of the day. So after two eight hour long streams, six cognitive tests and four brain scans, I had my results. I noticed that overall task performance on the sustained attention test had significantly improved with the device, especially when comparing the mean accuracy and reaction time across the trials. We can start to see that the mean accuracy improved 4.3% and the reaction time by 5.2%. As for the brain scans, there were some mixed results. But one thing that stood out to me was my theta to beta ratio response while counting. This test measures these two specific brain waves when switching from a resting state to a cognitive task. And if the ratio increases too much, it can indicate difficulty with focus. So we want to see lower numbers. And in my last brain scan of the day, when my focus was at its lowest point, there was a small improvement in this metric, bringing it up from 31% on day one to 13% on day two, which indicates a slight improvement in my focus. But with all that said, let's talk about my subjective experience. How did I actually feel with this device? Well, during the experiments, I evaluated myself on a level of fatigue, focus, and performance using a little questionnaire. Now overall, I didn't really feel like my performance was really that enhanced. Sure, I might have performed a little bit better during the games on day 2, but it really just felt like this was me warming up to a game that was still new to me, not really a result of the device. I did however notice an improvement in my rating of fatigue and focus. During the first half of each day, I felt almost equally focused and energized, but I usually hit a strong point of exhaustion around the late afternoon, which is when I started to notice a difference. Again, I can't really say if I played that much better on day 2, but I can say that I stayed more aware of my mistakes and felt it was easier to actively learn from them. To many, this might not sound that significant, but to me, this allowed me to get more learning out of those final hours of practice, making them more effective. Now overall, I experienced some benefits with this technology, but of course, these effects were limited. The device didn't induce a complete flow state, help me to absorb more information like a limitless pill, or allow me to stay focused for 12 hours without getting fatigued. I wasn't a godlike player, I was really just my normal self with a subtle boost. And while this sounds a little disappointing, it's actually quite exciting. This technology, especially at a consumer level device, is just at its first stages of development. And one of the most exciting parts of my chat with Igor was when he told me about what's coming up in the future. For example, while they've settled on a specific strength for now, they might end up finding that something more substantial works better. While Igor expressed how a hundred times stronger device may be a little uncomfortable to use, what about one that's only 10 times stronger, or even 2 times stronger? Now another area of curiosity is what happens when we try to influence multiple brainwaves at the same time. Every cognitive process involves a complex combination of several brainwaves. So controlling multiple brainwaves simultaneously may have a more significant effect. So ultimately, I don't really want to convince you of anything with this specific technology in its current form. What I do want you to do is to keep your eyes open in the world of brain boosting tech and start doing your own personal experiments. With more research, funding, and curious minds working on this and similar types of brain stimulating devices, we will no doubt see more and more exciting tools in the future. Right now, we are really just seeing the start of it all. Today we can get a small but significant upgrade in our training using electromagnetic fields, but in the not so distant future, we may be able to completely manipulate and upgrade our brains to perform with superhuman ability on demand. And once we can do that, we will truly become godlike players. If you guys want to see more videos on cutting edge research and consumer level brain enhancing technology, then let me know in the comments. 
Now this video is not sponsored by the company that sent the headbands, but they were nice enough to help me make this video and let me talk to Igor. So if you're curious to check it out, you can do so with the link in the description. They set it up as an affiliate link, so if you end up grabbing the device to experiment with it yourself, then it'll actually end up helping the channel as well. And as I mentioned in the video, I actually ended up streaming that experiment. And I'm going to be posting more streams and experiment type videos on our second channel. So if you didn't know that second channel existed or you're not following us on Twitch, then I'm going to leave links for those in the description as well. And of course, for anything else related to eAthlete Labs, whether it's our new brain training service for higher end competitive gamers and teams, whether it's our courses in coaching, or it's our nootropic supplements eAdvantage, all of that stuff is available for you on our website. So I'm going to leave a link for that as well. And overall, I hope you guys absolutely loved this video. I hope it was interesting, inspiring, and educational. And I'm excited to bring you guys more content like this. So for now, keep grinding, and I'll see you all in the next video.